My parents were uh, obsessed with celebrities, and uh, so, hi, here I am. Um, yeah, they really made it known that celebrities were something, and uh, I remember Charlton Heston came to town, and I was four years old, and everybody was crowding around getting, trying to get a good look at Charlton Heston, and uh, my dad put me on his shoulders to get a better look at him, because you know how four-year-olds love Charlton Heston. <laughs> He was using me as bait, hoping that Charlton would go, oh, a cute little girl, and come over, you know? Because people do that to me. If I'm out somewhere and people have a baby, they'll hold it out towards me, like, for me to hold it. And I'm like, this is cashmere, no. Uh -uh. But, you know, so then I grew up going, oh, celebrities. I guess everybody's like that. But, like, I mean, I was 16. I was younger than that, I think. And Michael Jackson was in New Orleans. And I was so, I heard where he was, what street he was on. And so I, I chased, I didn't chase. I was walking, he was walking, he started running. I had to catch up. <laughs> and... So I was excited by celebrities. I was really like, you know, but, and, and like I said, you want to finish laughing? I don't want to stop you. <laughs> um, but I, I really, you know, as much as that was an imprint that celebrities were special and, you know, I, I knew that, I didn't think I was going to be a celebrity. I didn't have a talent, I didn't play an instrument, I didn't sing, I wasn't in drama class, I didn't act, I wasn't a class clown, I, I was just kind of a regular kid. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I graduate high school, I'm still lost. I just was doing anything to pay rent, and I, I shucked oysters, and I sold vacuum cleaners, and I worked for a landscaping company, I was a waiter, which by the way, I think everyone should wait tables at least once in their life. Yeah. That and coal mining, because that seems hard, too. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was going to do, and my life changed when I was 21 years old, and my girlfriend at the time was killed in a car accident. And I passed the accident. It had just happened. I didn't know it was her, because she was in a different car. I almost stopped, but then sirens were right behind me and showing up, so I kept going, and I found out later it was her. And um, so I had to move out of the place we were living because I couldn't afford to live there anymore. I had no job, I had no car, no money. I moved into this tiny basement apartment and you could hardly stand up in it. It was two rooms and uh, I had a mattress on the floor and the entire basement was infested with fleas. There were fleas everywhere. And I was laying there and I just couldn't believe, it was the first person I ever lost that I loved. And, I was just, how is this possible? This beautiful young girl is gone and fleas are here. I don't understand <laughs> what fleas do even. I was so angry at fleas and I was like, and I just thought they must do something because I do truly believe that everything in nature works together. Even if we don't understand it, it does something for something else. And I wanted to understand this and I thought, I, I would like to talk to God, not just pray, but I would love to be able to pick up the phone and call up God and ask questions and get the answers. Because I used to write all the time. I journaled and I wrote poetry. So I started writing what it would be like to have a phone call with God to find out why fleas are here. And it wasn't meant to be funny. I'd never done comedy before. And, but I started thinking, well, it would ring for a long time. It's a big place. And, and then <laughs> he'd put me on hold because he's a busy guy. And onward Christian soldiers would play, but it was live, not a tape. And <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole thing, go back and watch a special. But um, <laughs> anyway, I finished writing it. I literally wrote without stopping. I finished writing it, and I read it, and I said to myself, I'm going to do this on Johnny Carson, and I'm going to be the first woman in the history of the show to be called over to sit down to talk to Johnny Carson. And... I mean, I'm in a basement on a mattress with fleas, never done comedy. I make that statement. Six years later, this happens. Thank you very much.
very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's very, that's very clever and very fresh. And uh... Well, that's wonderful hearing that from you. No, I mean it. It's good material. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you been doing it?